wife actually bought this at a yard sale and a couple of flips ago I, I painted that checkerboard dresser and she really liked the, the black and the gray combination. I'm gonna sand this down and this stuff here has to be sanded down smooth for it not to look bad. If I can't get this stuff sanded out, I'll probably distress it again. So it's gonna be a lot of sanding and I'm not looking forward to that, but it's just something that has to be done. So we're going to get after it. Another splinter from that lace wood. I have some 120 grit. Actually, I think as hard as this stuff is, if I can find my 80 grit sandpaper. Well, maybe I don't have any. Got that box of it. I don't know where my respirator is. I started sanding this and at, at first I thought I would just kind of sand it smooth and if a little bit of paint was left on that's fine, but, but this certainly looks like MDF. And then when I started coming over here, it looks like they've done the front and some, something similar to MDF. I don't think it's real MDF because this would be a, a whole lot heavier. And then I started working on the sides and this is a different material. It's, it's more of that, I think they call it chip board. So I think it's kind of manufactured in the same way that MDF is, but it's not as, I don't, I don't know what you would call it. It, it. it chips easier. It's a softer type wood. As a matter of fact, you see right there, there's a little bit of damage. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this front all the way down to the wood or MDF. And then on the sides, I'm just gonna sand it smooth since it's that chipboard or particle board. One thing that I thought of while I was sanding this, and that is I think I'm either gonna take my router and route these out or I don't know where my little chisel is. Is it over here? Might be better just to take a router. And they use some, like some type of plaster or something to give it that distressed look. I think I'm gonna end up. I remember one furniture flip I did. I took the piece of furniture in because it was 12,000 degrees outside. Well, the good news for this flip, it's not 12,000 degrees. However, based on the amount of time I spent sanding this, I'll probably have about 12,000 hours to complete the sanding on this. This plaster or whatever they use to kind of get that distressed and textured look, well, this is coming up pretty easy with the screwdriver, but that sandpaper, it just doesn't bite through it very well. This little thing is almost perfect. Almost perfect. I wonder if that would, yeah, that would chip out the, I don't want to use a wire brush. Okay, I have no idea what time it is, but, after work, I come out here, and I think I went through about five or six batteries from my charging station there. Those are both recharging. But I would say, you know, however many hours this took me, I'm probably more than halfway done with it. Because the back, well, one, they didn't put, which I'm kind of happy, you see all this textured stuff here. Some of that was just really, really tough sanding. But on the back, they really, they don't have any. There's really none of that plaster stuff. And even if there was, I wouldn't necessarily have to sand it off. I'd say I probably have another four hours in sanding. And that would include some of this detailed stuff. And I've got to get all that out. You can kind of see how all of this was 
just kind of covered in that to give it that distressed look. Get back out here. I think I'm gonna come out for a couple hours before work tomorrow, because I'd like to get the sanding done tomorrow, and we got a couple of things to do tomorrow evening, so I won't be able to spend as much time out in the shop. But I'd like to get some primer on here tomorrow evening. Time is it? Time to head out? All right, let's go. Let's see if this will work. I started smoking. It's uh, pretty dusty in here. But I'm gonna prime this maybe a couple of times. I never thought I would use 60 grit on this because of this material, but. I thought about replacing this clock, but uh, oh, it's kind of growing on me. There's uh, some floor clocks similar to this that are in a, um, like a black high sheen, probably a gloss, and it looked pretty good. So I'm trying to figure out what color pattern I want. Uh, black and gold always looks good together. I have some of that paint left, though the black was not a gloss. Casper already went up with the goats, so that means it's getting light. So I'm gonna call it quit. I got an early work day tomorrow. I probably have about maybe two or three more hours of sanding on this. You'll see right in through there. You gotta get all that out, all that around there. This isn't too bad. All right, it's uh, pretty early. I've got about an hour and a half before I need to go in and get ready for work. Okay, that's nice. Most of the time, and obviously nearly all of the time, we would take a wet washcloth and, and clean this. But because of this material, some people call it chip wood or whatever, this doesn't take moisture well at all. It could start to bubble up even with just a little bit of moisture. So I'm not going to take any chances. And I'm just going to use a microfiber cloth to get the dust off and you see I took the air to it. Now I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. I did that checkerboard piece and I really like that black and gray. Plus while we're moving, I'm trying to use up all of my paint. I don't want to move all that paint with us and I don't want to throw it away. So I'm just trying to use up some of this, this old paint that we have around. And, and a lot of these, these pieces like, like this, uh, I'm, we're keeping this, so my wife likes it. But what I'm trying to decide, I have that black and gray, I'm gonna use that same color combination. If this should be black, the flat surfaces, and then these gray, the accent parts of this, or vice versa. I think I'm gonna go with this being gray, and the flat surface is being the black. That's the plan right now. Well, that's perfect. I took this off the back. I was trying to figure out how to cover that. Right there is our answer. So when I go to paint this, I can just, or prime it, I'm gonna spray prime it. I just put that over there. All right, I wanna get this primed and, and I'm going to put on some spray primer and then I am going to I'm gonna brush on the first coat, and that's just because I wanna prime this. And I want to get it 
as smooth as we can, but I spent so many hours sanding this thing. I uh, kind of just ready to get, get to the next level. So we're gonna spray this thing and um, let that dry and then come back out tomorrow morning and get started painting. All right, so I put that on pretty thick in some spots. So I'm gonna give that a good bit of time to dry. You ever notice, like, I've left my truck sitting outside. It hasn't rained in probably three months. And we had, some of our goats had some babies and um, I wanted to put, put them up in the barn. So I went out and got some, some square bales of hay. And uh, once you know, the day that I go get some square bales of hay, it starts pouring down rain. So, park the truck halfway in the shop tonight. Okay, we're going to use, I've been catching some heat for the paint that I'm using. I don't even know what kind this is, but I've said it on a couple of videos, we're moving and I don't wanna throw all this in the, in the landfill. So yes, I'm aware of, of different types of furniture paint. I'm just, I wanna get rid of some of this stuff so we don't have to Take it with us when we move and I don't have to throw it, throw it away. Do what we can to save the earth. Thanks to Caitlin, I went out and bought this mist bottle. I, uh, I've been using this one and I don't know, something, something chewed that up and it works half the time and it sprays a bunch out. Did you have, you know that feeling that you get when you go to the barber shop or the beauty salon, depending on where you go get your hair cut? And when I lived in Japan, you go get a haircut and they would give you a massage and you know on your neck and crack your neck and do all those things. You know that feeling that you get when you walk out of there, your shoulders are a little bit high, you're walking, you're feeling good, you feel like you look good? That's the feeling I get when I spray this. It is such a fine mist that I remember, yeah, well, it's probably been multiple years ago now, but when I used to, when I first started painting furniture in that, I would keep a little bucket out here and I would stick my fingers in the bucket and I just, <laughs> just flick it on the paint. And now they got this stuff here. Look at how fine that mist is. It's perfect. So thanks, Caitlin. You made me feel like I just got my hair cut. I'm picturing that old commercial where two people are running down the beach and they meet in the middle. I forget what that is. I may not have to spray this. this looks like it's it's gonna lay down real nice. Wish I knew what kind of paint this was. Looking at it, it's pretty thick. But on that dresser I did, it it was uh, it had a real nice finish to it. It's not furniture paint. Probably like a a satin. I could not see any brush strokes in the uh, dresser that I did, and and this kind of looks like it's gonna be the same. And I'm, I'm putting it on pretty thick. I kind of like that because it sprays longer than you press it so you can cover your whole piece evenly. It's a Hula Home Mist Spray Bottle. I'll put a link in the description if you want one. We'll let that dry. Okay, back at it today. Uh, we have this rough stuff. We'll need to get that sanded down with some higher grit sand paper. Here's 180 here, and then the next one I'll probably go up to 400 or 320 or whatever I might have here. We're gonna have to do it by hand. It's a little too aggressive. And I wish you could have felt how, how rough that is, but no reason to worry. It's just that, the type of that chipboard, chip wood, whatever you call it. It was a little worse than I expected, so it'll probably take three coats.
Okay, hopefully that'll be the last coat I put on the back. I think the front and the sides, specifically the, the one side, is, uh, yeah, it'll need another coat. It's going to take forever to dry today because it's kind of rainy and a little bit cold outside. Hopefully by this evening, then, I'll be able to get another coat on that. But for now, we'll let it dry. Okay. Those bulbs put out a lot of heat, so I put the heat on there. Okay, gotta go get my paintbrush. Time for another haircut. There's a couple of areas in here I don't think gonna ever look good painted without some more filling in those little gaps. This was a tough spot to sand. I guess. All right, I didn't like how a lot of this was laying. The paint just didn't have a good finish to it. So I went back through, resanded everything and put another coat of primer on that. Okay, I want to get just a rough coat of gray on this. And I want to do that just to make sure that I'm going to like it. Okay, I think that'll look pretty nice. I'm going to paint this first inside rim here. I'm going to grab a little bit smaller brush. I sanded that down a little bit. Put another coat of black on there and do some gray. I, I might... Trim that inlay out in a gold, maybe. All right, I brought this in. It's probably about 30 some degrees outside and wet and rainy. I got this gold. I'm just going to kind of put some gold accents right in there. I might get a more pointed brush here. I like the selection of brushes that came in this kit. Got one with a sharper point. And here's a little side-by-side -side of what we started with and then what we ended up with. All right, and here is our finished floor clock. Which if you notice, there's a clock right there that says 9.30 and there's a clock right there that says 2.50. This clock is the accurate time this clock, I have removed the batteries because the seconds that tick echo throughout the entire house. So we're going to have to decide whether to keep that there as decoration or just go ahead and get rid of it. But here we go with our finished floor clock. As always, thanks for watching.